Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. The stadium concerts here in the New York area in 1965. Close association with uh, WABC. He was really the promoter at the time and right. had very close contacts both with us and with the Beatles. We spoke with him a little while ago and uh, he told me of an interesting story of where he was tonight and how he heard about the uh, death of John Lennon. You will not believe this. I was sitting with two young men on 72nd Street and the delicatessen having late dinner. Fine and Shapiro between Columbus and Broadway, a block and a half from where this occurred, and talking about John Lennon and the interview this month in Playboy, talking about him and not knowing what it was going on a block and a half from where we were sitting. That's Sid Bernstein. Uh, Howard, he also uh, had, uh, he was very sad on the phone, as, as you might well imagine. Sure. Um, he also seemed a bit, I, I don't want to say vicious, but that's the word that, that comes to mind. Uh, when we play this back, uh, I think you'll, you'll hear what I mean. My kids were quite younger in a state of shock. They're Beatle fans like millions and millions of kids who, who, who came on the scene after the Beatles disbanded. And, you know, the new, new people who appreciate their music and their contribution. It's a shock to those of us who enjoyed their music and enjoyed seeing them on film and reading about them. And I think something important has to be done so that this life wasn't lost in vain. Uh, that's uh, Sid Bernstein, a, a very, very distraught man at this hour. He sounds it. It's, well, understandably so, because, uh, you know, nobody was really closer to them and in, uh, in what they did and what they stood for. Uh, there were, you know, there were, there were very few people who actually could get close to John Lennon uh, because of his uh, seclusion and everything, I imagine. But uh, he didn't really have much to do with Lennon in recent years. What he said was that they they did speak to each other on a semi-regular basis, sure, and that uh, sure. he was aware that Lennon was. Uh, he was very personally involved with the man. Um, you know, it's like it's like a, a, a prodigal son, as the case may be. Oh, certainly. Uh, when we take a listen to this uh, next piece, I think you'll, you'll see a bit more of uh, that coming out. Here's Sid Bernstein again. Yeah. He was so great a father. His, his son, his children are deprived of a, a great human being, a great contributor to the happiness of millions and millions of people around the world. It is a shame that life had to be taken from us in this unnecessary way. Okay. That's um, <laughs> very touching. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, that kind of says it all about, uh, about uh, what, uh, you know, about what uh, John Lennon meant. But I, I think the interesting thing that uh, we should point out that, uh, that Sid uh, talked about there a little while ago about his kids. Now, how old are his kids? Are they... Uh, his kids, I'd say, are in the uh, 14, 15... He said they came, yeah, they came around after the Beatles. And it's just amazing how uh, the Beatles affected the people who, who came after them. Uh, oh, they're, not they're, just the people who grew up listening to them, but they, they still have an effect on people these days. Well, the, the effect of the, the Beatles as a group is, is far beyond that of uh, any other group. There, there has been nothing to equal the Beatles, and, and probably will never, never be when you realize how many, awesome. how many songs. But, but the cultural force is just you know, astonishing. And again, and again, we should point out that, you know, this is not to take anything away from Paul or George or Ringo. You know, they're still very much around and still, uh, you know, pumping out what they want to do. But uh, John, I think, was probably the, I guess, I guess the, more or less the acknowledged leader of the, of the group. Um, I think he was... Uh, he was the most he was, outspoken. He was the certainly. most outspoken, the most philosophical. Uh, he, did, uh, he did a lot of the talking for the Beatles, which got them in a lot of trouble, but he was just... He was just speaking his mind, and he well, cannot, uh, you cannot blame the man for doing that. Well, speaking of the talking, as it were, uh, we were on the phone also a little while ago with uh, Rick Sklar, who at, uh, at the time was the program director here at WABC. Right. And he read to us a letter that came from John Lennon. I'm currently going through one of my 18-month or so retreats on our primal therapy, meditations in the Himalayas. 
something I've been doing even as a child. Yoko's pregnancy, thank God, is going well and happens to coincide with my natural and instinctive hibernations. At the ripe old age of 34, I find myself going back to the age-old question, what the hell is going on? Why are we here? Followed closely by, am I doing what I really want to do or simply doing what I'm supposed to do? Anyway, I'm trying rather badly to explain the inexplicable. I don't think that this kind of introspection is the luxury of the artist, rich or poor. I just never believed in waiting till death's door before facing, or at least trying, the eternal mysteries. Powerful. Uh, that was uh, that letter was about six years ago. Six years ago. Um, right before then, Lenin had been going through that uh, that angry state. The the um, protesting, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the repercussions of the, the Beatle breakup, uh, which is about, you know... That was a very bitter time. Very, you know, it's, it's just a very unpleasant situation. Just well, that, that's, that's why... You know, Beatle fans were just kind of, you know, walking around with a great big squint on their faces saying, what is going on? What is happening? And uh, as time went on, they, uh, they had realized there was a lot of... There was a lot in that. There was, mm -hmm. a, lot of, uh, there was a lot of thought behind what went on. You know, people just have to do their, their own thing and, uh, you know, go their own separate ways and have to follow what they feel is right. And nobody, nobody preached that more than John Lennon did. But nobody verbalized it or was able to verbalize it like John Lennon was anyway. The Defiant Side of John Lennon on WABC. I understand that, uh, in Tom's word, 72nd Street, uh, trying to drive into that area is like a folly. It's, uh, you know, there's just a lot of people there. There's still about four or 500 people out there, according to him. And uh, he, even when he was on the phone with me, there was an accident happened right there. So try to stay away from that area. You know, it's, uh, it's probably best that you just kind of steer clear of that. Uh, one side light is that he told me that uh, there are people in the surrounding apartment buildings lit candles in the windows. Uh, in remembrance of John, so uh, that's nice. And everybody who's out there right now, hey, you know, <laughs> it's happened. And kind of, kind of hate to tell you this, but you know, it's 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 about the only thing that I can say. It happened. Ain't much you can do about it right now, but uh, maybe think of ways of preventing it from happening again. To you, to me, to anybody. Seventy-seven WABC. Remembering John Lennon. Here I stand. 77 WABC, New York's radio station. It's uh, 3.40 in the morning. This is Howard Hoffman. Let's uh, kind of recap what's uh, been going on and the details that we have so far. John Lennon, the legendary Beatle who helped rewrite rock history. He was shot to death late Monday, police said, by uh, someone whose record album he had autographed hours before, believe that or not. Lennon, who was 40 years old last October, he was shot five times Monday night in front of his home, uh, the Dakota Cooperative Apartments, which is on Central Park West. His wife, Yoko Ono, was with him at the time. She escaped injury, and she was with him uh, when, he, uh, when he passed on. Police charge Mark David Chapman, 25 years old, of Honolulu with a sling. Chief of Detectives James Sullivan said that Chapman was, quote, apparently a wacko. We'll find out more about that. Chapman had reportedly arrived in New York about a week ago and had been seen hanging around the Dakota, uh, which is, you know, a traditional pilgrimage stop for old Beatle fans in the city, so it's not very unusual for uh, people to hang around in that area. On Monday afternoon, police said that Chapman got Lennon to autograph a copy of his latest album, Double Fantasy. And uh, police said that Lennon drove into the Dakota's courtyard shortly before 11 p.m. tonight uh, with his wife. He'd been at a recording session, putting the finishes, finishing touches on his latest album. And according to police, Chapman was waiting in the courtyard where the Dakota permitted fans of uh, the ex Beatle and other celebrity residents to congregate and wait for a peek at their heroes. Um, and as Lennon left his car, though, walked towards the vestibule, police said that Chapman approached him, called out Mr. Lennon, and then they said he drew a 38 caliber gun from his coat and fired five times. John Lennon staggered about six steps to a small guard's office at the entrance of the building. Uh, then he fell face down and lapsed into a coma, and that was, uh, that was it. John Lennon, dead this morning at the age of 40. 77 WABC, we are working on it right now, and we will uh, give you more details as time goes on right here. Paint the box right 
77 WABC and paperback writer, the Beatles, of course, uh, John Lennon uh, being uh, part of the writing team, Lennon and McCartney, which uh, wrote, frankly, all the Beatles songs. It's uh, quarter to four in the morning with Howard Hoffman. There's still a crowd out there by the Dakota where John Lennon lived and uh, where John Lennon was shot. And uh, telling us more on that, here's Shelley Sunstein. Oh, Several thousand people are outside the Dakota singing the song that most personifies John Lennon. They're holding up their hands in, in the peace symbol of the 60s. A woman has just laid down a bouquet of flowers in front of the gates here at the Dakota. It's as if people don't know what else to do with their grief, so they've gathered outside the apartment where John Lennon lived with his wife, Yoko, and son, Sean. Thank you, Shelley. And we'll more as time goes on right here on 77 WABC. In my life, John Lennon and the Beatles from 77 WABC. New York's radio station, 12 and a half minutes before 4 o'clock. This is Howard Hoffman. Howard, at Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. W-A-B-C. John Lennon, Mind Games, something which you knew a lot about. Let me tell you, on 77 WABC, New York's radio station. It's 3.55 in the morning. Time now for a WABC news update, and here's the latest with Bob Capers. Howard, bizarre is the word for the story unfolding this morning in the aftermath of last night's murder of one of the few of whom it could truly be said was a legend in his own time. We speak, of course, of 40-year-old John Lennon, who was shot and killed last night upon returning to his home and office at the 100-year-old Dakota Apartments on West 72nd Street. A suspect was immediately taken into custody, and we get this from Chief of Detectives James Sullivan regarding one Mark David Chapman of Hawaii. He, Mr. Chapman, has been about the Dakota for the last several days. He was there on Saturday asking about Mr. Lennon. He was there on Sunday asking about Mr. Lennon. And he was there again this afternoon when Mr. Lennon and his wife left for a recording session. He was able to obtain an autograph on an album from Mr. Lennon as he left for the recording studio where he was going. And following that recording session, Lennon and his wife Yoko Ono returned to the Dakota, and Chief Sullivan tells us... They got out of the car, out of the limousine, and walked into the archway area of the Dakota. To the right, as you walk in the archway area, is kind of a vestibule, which uh, has a doorway, uh, a glass doorway. This individual, uh, Mr. Chapman, came up behind him and called to him, Mr. Lennon, as he arrived at that doorway and then in a combat stance he fired he emptied the charter arms 38 caliber gun that he had with him and uh, shot john lennon times and several times and john lennon arrived at roosevelt hospital doa wabc news time 357 it's 59 degrees and cloudy in new york about John Lennon and talk of death in a Playboy interview. That story coming up. Grand Central Station next stop. Ever walk through a smoking car on a train? That's where you see people who really need Topol, the smoker's tooth polish. Next. In keeping with the irony of it all, in the January 1981 edition of Playboy magazine, John Lennon is featured in an interview in which the subject of death crops up. Of death, Lennon declares, it's better to fade away than to burn out. And he spoke of not wanting to die before his career has ended, as was the case with many other superstars. Then it also states in Playboy, I don't appreciate the worship of dead Sid Vicious or of dead James Dean or of dead John Wayne. And Lennon also says, I worship the people who survive. President-elect Reagan and wife Nancy doing an overnight stay here in the big city. Later today, there is to be a session with Cardinal Cook and a group of black leaders who surprisingly supported him. Surprising in the sense that most other black leaders did not. Reagan heads for Washington Wednesday, and by the end of the week, his cabinet will be shaping up. If Governor Byrne goes along, there will be three minutes of silence every day in all the public schools of New Jersey. The state assembly passes the measure Monday. 
Connecticut Governor Ella Grasso was back in the hospital following complications in her continuing bout with cancer. Mrs. Grasso will shortly relinquish her post to Lieutenant Governor William O'Neill. And at Rockefeller Center last night, the annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony, compliments of Charles and Mary Lou Makes of Suffering in Rockland County. It's from their land that the 65-foot Norway spruce was plucked this year, and a good time was had by the thousands who gathered at the center for this most colorful Big Apple event. And in Monday Night Football on ABC down Miami Way, the Dolphins up in New England 16-13 on a sudden overtime field goal that puts the skids to the Patriots' hopes for a playoff berth or even a wild card entry. WABC News Time, 359. Straight ahead, more of the Howard Hoffman Show. The weather person says cloudy tonight, a chance of showers into Tuesday morning, low in the mid-40s. The threat of rain Tuesday, high 45 to 50. Rain is likely Tuesday night, low 35 to 40. More rain expected Wednesday morning. It's 59 degrees at WABC New York, New York's radio station. <laughs>